Today, we are a nation awakened to the evil of terrorism and determined to destroy it. That work began the moment we were attacked, and it will continue until justice is delivered. President Bush pledges America will not let up in its war on terrorism. This is News 3 at Noon with Sue Manteras and Scott Hawes. Good afternoon, everyone. September 11th, 2001, a day that will never be forgotten, a day that exactly a month later is being remembered across the country. Today is the fifth day of military airstrikes against the Taliban. Sarah Lee has the latest now from the Pentagon. American warplanes scream overhead, unleashing their fury on the Afghan city of Kabul. The Taliban is now accusing the U.S. military of killing 100 people in a village near Jalalabad in the eastern part of that country, plus 15 others in a mosque. Overnight, you could see the flames and plumes of smoke left behind by the bombs and missiles, including the GBU-28s, or bunker-busting bombs like this one, designed to penetrate al-Qaeda command posts buried into the cliffs. The airstrikes now clear the way for U.S. commandos like these to make their move from the ground. Pakistani officials report hundreds of U.S. ground troops have arrived in that country. Stateside, another anthrax scare. Tests show a third employee from American media in Boca Raton, Florida, has been exposed to anthrax. However, this latest victim, a 35-year-old woman, has been taking antibiotics. A memorial service at the World Trade Center. Hundreds of dusty cleanup workers stop amidst the still smoking ruins to remember the thousands of lives lost in the rubble. Here at the Pentagon, a special service reminds the rest of us how close this war has hit to home. President Bush and military leaders take the morning to pause and remember the 189 killed here last month when hijackers crashed a jetliner into this building. And from that sorrow, has come great resolve. Today, we are a nation awakened to the evil of terrorism and determined to destroy it. Sarah Lee, NBC News, The Pentagon. In addition to the names of the lost and missing, some Islamic scripture was read by a Muslim U.S. Army chaplain. This was followed by the singing of America the Beautiful. One American casualty has been reported so far an Air Force sergeant killed during a forklift accident in the country of Qatar. While commercial airlines have been restoring service over the past month, much of the general aviation community is still grounded by order of the FAA. Pilots out at North Las Vegas Airport have more time to spend at the Landing Lights restaurant these days. Out on the field, some large tour operators are still taking off like this one, while hundreds of other smaller airplanes cannot. For many, the rules don't make sense, which makes it hard for grounded pilots to come up with a course of action. You know, if I wanted to, I could come out here any time of night when the tower is closed, climb in my airplane and still fly, keeping it low enough, they wouldn't pick me up on radar. And there's really no way to police it. We're getting very little response back from the National Security Council as to what the problem is, so it's hard to help them if they won't tell us what their concern is. The Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association is the main lobby group for people affected by the ban. They put together a list of security suggestions for the FAA, but have not received an official response yet. We will have the complete story tonight on a special edition of News 3 at 530, following the president's address to the nation. We are now at one of the highest levels of security ever on the Las Vegas Strip. Several Las Vegas hotels are even using X-ray machines to scan incoming mail. At Bally's in Paris, Las Vegas, photo IDs are being checked as cars enter the parking garage. Despite massive layoffs at most hotels, some properties are actually adding people to their security forces. Hotel security chiefs are looking at technological upgrades hey, as well. Some places have x-ray machines where they're x-raying uh, all the incoming mail. Uh, there's also retina scan entry devices out on the market that we're looking into. Some places are looking into facial recognition programs, and, and we need to find out what's going to benefit us and the tourists the most. Hotel security chiefs are also busy putting together a plan of action designed to deal with a biological or chemical attack. In other news, if you like the convenience of mailing letters from your community mailbox, enjoy it while it lasts. It's now official the outgoing slots on community boxes will be shut down.
Dealing with nearly 1,300 boxes in the 89129 zip code. It will take about a year to get to every box in the valley. Postal workers plan to add the blue drop boxes in neighborhoods before sealing up the slots in the cluster mailboxes. Although it is not as convenient, leaders say it is a lot better than trying to get your finances in order if a check gets stolen. It's not too late to speak your mind about the government's plans to build a nuclear waste dump at Yucca Mountain. A hearing took place in Amargosa Valley last night. Mayor Oscar Goodman is urging anyone who cannot attend the meetings to still make an effort to voice their opinions about this project. Okay, we're hopefully going to have that tape a little bit later on for you. Actually, it is a commercial, a public service announcement that the mayor has recorded. It is the third and it talks about the third and final public hearing, which is set for Friday in Pahrump. Now, if you can't make it to that meeting, the DOE has set up an area inside the Las Vegas Science Center, which is across from Meadows Mall on Meadows Lane. You can go there and have your opinion put on official record. For more information, you can log on to our website, too, at kvbc.com. This public comment period surrounding Yucca Mountain will close October the 19th. And tomorrow morning on News 3 at Sunrise, we will have an expert from the DOE here in the studio to talk about why it seems that the government is so set on making Yucca Mountain the nuclear repository. That is again tomorrow morning on News 3 at Sunrise. And right now, though, we want to talk about our lovely cooler weather. Oh, a lot perfect. of people have been talking about it. They're ready for their sweaters. And this is the day, right, John? Well, it's just nice to be talking about something else, anything, even the weather. And I'm telling you, it's something that a lot of people are talking about in very positive terms. It is beautiful. Fall has definitely arrived. We've also got some cloud cover moving in. And we got, it appears, as, so, uh, is that a little Cretus grant up on the Rio cam lens? Perhaps. I have to send Marcus up there to get some cleaning done. All right. Windex on its way. 72 degrees out of McCarran. Outstanding. That's 13 degrees below average. Humidity just 13 percent. The winds are calm. Barometer falling 30.01. When we get back together, we're going to talk about the rest of the afternoon on day two of the Invences Classic Golf Tournament here in Las Vegas. We'll, of course, get you through the weekend before the end of the hour, and I've got more stuff than I know what to give away, uh, well, to do with to give away. We might have to extend the newscast. In the meantime, we'll <laughs> send it back to you, Sue and Scott. All right, Johnny, thank you. Millions of Americans are still in search of a way to shed those unwanted pounds. Many Americans are turning to the Internet for help. Still ahead, find out why some doctors say that might not be the best answer. I'm Shara Kimiko. It's called Dine Out for America. So the next time you go out to eat today or this evening, the money that you'll be paying for that dinner could be going to help some of the folks back east. I'll tell you all about it next on News 3, where news comes first. I'm Kendall Tenney. Some people are rushing to get their hands on antibiotics that protect against biological agents. If there was a threat, I definitely would, sure, protect my family. How effective antibiotics would be in the event of an attack today at 4. You're watching Southern Nevada's number one choice for news. This is News 3 at noon. It's lunchtime right now, oh, yes. so we're already thinking about food. We're smelling great food because it is Restaurant of the Weekday, but we'll talk about tonight that. for dinner, it's a great reason to go out. Great food for a great cause around the country and here in town. Mm -hmm. It is Dine Out for America Day, where much, if not all, of the proceeds at each restaurant will go to relief efforts Ooh. from the September 11th tragedy. Shara Kimiko has been at the Outback Steakhouse all morning long. Now she is at the Sahara near I-15 location right now. Macaroni uh, Grill just opened for lunch. And uh, this restaurant is also donating all of its money too, right, Shara? Is that right? That is correct. There are a few that are giving 100% of their daily sales. Macaroni Grill is one of those restaurants that are giving 100% of their daily sales to help the people that were affected by the September 11th terrorist attacks. There are about 6,000 restaurants nationwide that are participating in this event for this cause. Now, we caught up with some people at a couple of the restaurants who say their, their time and effort hopes to pay off. The cooking starts early at the Outback Steakhouse. Today, it's the Dine Out for America Day. 100% of the money made here goes to charity. It's the right thing to do. Paul DeTurvey is one of many helping to get this event going. My heart comes from, you know, cooking food for um, all my life. So when I see other people in need, 
you know, it brings out the best in everyone. From 400 steaks to 30 pounds of bacon to 300 pounds of potatoes, there's a lot of food to be had. Nationwide, uh, with the Outback, we're planning to donate approximately seven to ten million dollars. Macaroni Grill is another of thousands of restaurants participating, hoping to make a difference. A lot of times you feel that you don't have, uh, your hands are tied on, on how much you can help. Um, so this is a good way for us as a, as a restaurant to, to get involved. For you, it means filling your tummy with top choice foods while giving for a good cause. And it is definitely good food indeed. We've been test tasting it all day. This is the first time I'm told nationally that all restaurants have come together for a cause such as this nature. Usually it's just done on more of a local level. So come on down and eat with some of these restaurants. The money is going for a good cause. Outback opens at 4 o'clock today. It is open until 10.30 or until the last person leaves. Of course, Macaroni Grill is already opened. It opened about a half hour to an hour ago, and it will be open until about 11 p.m. Reporting live, I'm Sherry. Can we go back to you in the studio? Can we get it now? Sherry is just going from restaurant to, to restaurant. restaurant. Exactly. Yeah, all the ones that Are you participating? Let me just try that just real quickly. <laughs> I have to test taste it to make sure it's okay for everybody else to eat. That's I'm with exactly. you on that one, Sherry. Good for you. Good well, for you. there are plenty of restaurants here in town participating in Dine Out for America. That's right. For a complete list, just head to our website, kvbc.com. The link is on the home page. With so many quick weight loss programs, how do you know which one really works? Coming up, we'll tell you why some people are turning to the internet to help them lose weight. Dining out weight loss programs. Go together. Yeah. Do they? Sure. sure. Like soup and sandwich. Yeah. All right. Let's, uh, <laughs> coming up next, we'll have your complete forecast. And speaking of food, I've got stuff to give away that you can eat and more on the Frederick's Factor on News 3 at noon, where food comes first. All the catches, all the hits, all the highlights of every high school football game across the valley. Join News 3's Mitch Roberts for the thrills and chills of local high school football. Operation Football is brought to you by Sunrise Medical, Sprint Yellow Pages, and Channel 3. Watch Operation Football Fridays on News 3 Nightside at 11. All the highlights for you to see. Friday nights on Channel 3. Study after study shows that Americans are fat and getting fatter. Many of them are turning to the internet to help lose weight. But how do they know they're getting good advice? Dr. Kim Mulvihill has the details. Growing numbers of Americans who would rather not grow anymore are turning to the internet to lose weight. Lisa Dreyer is a registered dietitian with DietWatch.com. She says there are big advantages to online dieting. One is convenience. You don't have to make an appointment to get support. When you're online, all you need is an internet connection. It doesn't matter, you know, if you're in the afternoon or whether you're craving the cookie jar at 1 in the morning. You can go online 24 hours a day and receive support. And there's evidence to show it can work. A study in the Journal of the American Medical Association found websites that offered a structured, informed weight loss program were effective in helping people lose weight. But how can you tell if an online weight loss site is giving good advice? First, you want to make sure that the site is backed by professionals. Um, if it's a diet website, it should be backed by registered dietitians who are credentialed by the American Dietetic Association. Also, be wary of promises of big losses in a short time. Anything more than a pound or two a week could be dangerous. Does the site offer online professional counseling, chat rooms for support, and advice on exercise? But whether you go to a traditional or online program, the bottom line for weight loss is the same. Ultimately, it's up to you. Being online provides the individual with a very comfortable environment. And they know, you know, if they're going to cheat, they're only cheating themselves. I'm Dr. Kim Mulvihill for NBC News. As with any weight loss program, one of the keys is exercise. Studies show that people who exercise regularly are much more likely to both lose weight and keep it off than people who don't exercise. That's exactly right. And of course, you need good weather if you want to exercise outside. A lot of people have been waiting for it to cool off. Well, no more excuses because we're talking primo weather for exercising outside. Yeah, and uh, John Fredericks, uh, we heard you there. What's going on? Oh, hi. Oh, do we have my mic open a little early? Shh, what? Hi, hi, shh, shh, we're on the air.
it's okay. Uh, we've got <laughs> we got some clouds hanging around. It's beautiful out there. 72 degrees, 13 percent humidity. Winds calm. Barometer falling. 30.01. Do we have our Wells Fargo WeatherNet Center? Sure. All right. Uh, 71 degrees at Spring Mountain and Jones and 19% humidity, so it's a dry coolness. Love it. Love the dry heat. Love the dry coolness. And uh, let's take a quick check on some uh, numbers around or the outside of the valley. 73 Boulder City, 81 Laughlin, 59 up uh, the mountain. Franny's taking some time off over the hump and prump. That's all right. We don't pay our weather watchers. They volunteer their time. 79 out of the lake. Your forecast uh, today, tonight, and tomorrow. Well, golfers with late tee times. Hey, that's kind of cool looking. That's weird. 80, 52, 77. A little breezy late today, a little breezy tomorrow morning. 77 yesterday, 85 is the average. I don't think we're going to get close to 85 all the way through the extended period. What's happening out there? Well, we've got uh, 60, 69 degrees here. I think not. 73 Barstow, 68 Los Angeles, 63 in San Francisco, 59 in Flagstaff. All right. Across the rest of the nation, problems. This area of low pressure, the, the center of the low is actually sitting up right behind the banner here up in Canada. The big draping cold front, it's like a whip. It's not here, there's a problem. It's the end of the whip and the end's right here and that's what you put it in motion. You can, you'll see all the boxes. These are weather watches coming up. These are actually tornado watches that are in effect for portions of Texas, Louisiana and Mississippi, even Arkansas seeing some severe weather now. Where is our cloud cover coming from? Right there, this particular system here. But this is a fairly weak front. It's just going to give us some clouds and some breezes, particularly this afternoon, like I said, tonight through tomorrow. When you wake up tomorrow morning, it's going to be on the breezy side, no question about it. 74 New York, 77 Raleigh, 73 right now in hot Atlanta, and 68 degrees in the City of Angels. I, I told you I had so much stuff to give away. And we're going to do it in just a moment. 81 today, 83 tomorrow with some breezy conditions hanging around late tonight through tomorrow morning. 81 Friday, 84 Saturday, and 84 on Sunday. I'm not entirely sure why Sunday doesn't uh, update. We'll have to figure that out. Something with our new system. I mean, I'm sure it's my fault. Oh, is that is that what it was? Okay, <laughs> that's a problem. All right, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, give you a chance to win. I told you I have stuff. And more than likely, the news director and the consultant watching right at this time. 60% of women say they receive 11 of these a day. 60% of women say they receive 11 of these a day. 11 of what? Careful now, this is a family program. Call us. Oh my goodness, do I have stuff for you to win. Uh, we talked about it earlier in the house, Kahunaville. One, yes, that's correct, Scott. One... Um, We've got dinner for two at Kahunaville. Outstanding. Ate there a couple weeks ago. It was wonderful. Also, two tickets to see uh, Tommy and Dick. Who? 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 Smothers, Smothers Brothers. Brothers. Tomorrow night at the Orleans. Mm -hmm. And the second correct caller, in fact, whoever, you guys decide. I got two tickets to see John Michael Montgomery tomorrow night at the Stratosphere, and that includes buffet passes. Two winners today for the price of one. 657-3425. We will see if we can sort uh, whatever these computer ills are and then have your complete forecast. Yeah. And the answer in the next half hour. Now, I always got one of the Smothers Brothers mixed up yeah. with Johnny Carson growing up. Always. You did? Always. That would be Tommy. Is that Tommy? Yeah. Like Tommy is the one without. Is that what you without said? Without the mustache? Mom liked him Tommy the best. Yeah. Mom liked him yeah. best. Well, two women who were recently laid off from Las Vegas hotels are in Washington, D.C. today to share their experiences with lawmakers. Coming up, we'll talk to these women live from Washington, D.C. and find out what, ha what is happening at today's meetings. Still ahead on News 3 at noon, where news comes first. Welcome back. Mailings from groups trying to confuse the elderly about Social Security and Medicare benefits happen all the time. Many times these organizations offer services that the government gives for free. Here's Mary Norton with information on how to identify these misleading mailings and what to do about them. It's an invasion of privacy as far as I'm concerned. It really is. Lorna Daniels was a victim of misleading mailings. She received a letter urging her to become part of the Notch Victim Register. A pre-printed and self-addressed form to TRIA asked for the name, address, all the details, Social Security number, place of birth, 
and also names formerly used, your maiden name. All that went into it. So re they really did a number on me. Misleading mailings are not new. Cold lead mailers like these offer seniors information about health issues and insurance, but what they're really after is personal information to sell to other organizations. Many of these mailings, particularly the ones that go to seniors, prey upon their concerns about Social Security and Medicare benefits. And so this is one of the things that will continue to uh, be a problem for older Americans. Mail you get from the government won't look like this. Usually mail that you get from an organization that has contracted with somebody else to do a mailing is going to be a lot more flamboyant. It's going to promise things. It's not going to state things. It's going to ask for your help. Experts say the best way to avoid the trappings of misleading mailings is to educate yourself about what the government has to offer and double check claims made by any organization. Older Americans really need to protect themselves by scrutinizing anything they get in the way of a solicitation. Most of these are not organizations they know. If a mailing you receive makes an offer to get you the money you deserve, chances are you'll only get more mail you don't deserve. I'm Mary Norton reporting. For more information on legislative issues concerning older Americans, log on to our website at kvbc.com. We have set up a link to the AARP's website. Those who died a month ago today are being remembered at the site of the World Trade Center and Pentagon. Coming up, we'll take you to the two services. In today's Take the Time to Teach, to learn how you can help your children deal with the tragic current events. Also, a new restaurant from Treasure Island is here in the studio. We're cooking with Kahunaville. All this and more coming up in the next half hour of News 3 at noon. I'm Kendall Tenney. Some people are rushing to get their hands on antibiotics that protect against biological agents. If there was a threat, I definitely would, sure, protect my family. How effective antibiotics would be in the event of an attack today at 4. This is News 3 at noon with Sue Manteras and Scott Hawes. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to News 3. Many people around the country are facing economic hardships since the September 11th attacks. Now, lawmakers in Washington are hammering out the details of an economic stimulus package. Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley invited two women from Las Vegas who were recently laid off to be a part of the roundtable discussions. And Congresswoman Berkeley joins us now live from Washington, D.C. with Lucy Cedeno and Jewel Jackson. Ladies, thank you for joining us this afternoon. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Congresswoman Thank you. Berkeley, let me ask you, we've heard so much about this economic stimulus package. How close are we to seeing something like this passed? And what are you targeting right now as a part of this panel to have involved with that package? Actually, we're close to, uh, to creating an economic stimulus package for the entire country that we will be able to vote on in the United States House of Representatives probably by next week. One of the concerns we have is that we don't forget the laid off workers. And needless to say, Las Vegas was one of the hardest hits, uh, hardest hit cities in the United States when it came to, uh, to our economy. Uh, September 11th had devastating consequences for the city of Las Vegas. Uh, these two wonderful women, uh, Lucy and Jewel, did a spectacular job at the roundtable uh, uh, discussion that we had, setting forth the problems that they were having uh, when it comes to health care for their families, unemployment benefits, getting back on their feet. They, they were so good, and they demonstrated they were the, the face of the 15,000 workers in Las Vegas that have been laid off, and they spoke with great passion and great feeling and great empathy of what it's like to be a laid-off worker in the aftermath of the September 11th the tragedy. Jewel, Congresswoman Shelley Berkeley gave you this opportunity to speak on behalf of so many people here in Southern Nevada. What were you able to tell the lawmakers? What specifically did you say to them? Well, I explained it to him the importance of our medical benefits. A lot of people's right today is uh, without medical benefits. And it's so crucial right now in this time and age that, you know, we have the medical benefits. Personally, what are you going through and what is your family facing right now here in Southern Nevada? Well, right now it's hard for me as far as my rent. Uh, this month my rent is paid up, but as far as, you know, next month, I don't know what's going to happen. 
And as far as going back to my job, it's like, you know, nothing. I, have, I don't know anything yet. So it's very hard. Lucy, were the uh, other lawmakers able to ask you some questions to find out a little bit more about your specific situation? Of course, the thousands of others that are in situations like yours here in Las Vegas? Well, no, uh, because uh, he didn't have to. Uh, he didn't have to ask me any questions because I tried to get to the point that everybody over uh, in uh, in Nevada, that uh, among the fifty thousand workers, all these people that they lost their jobs, he understood uh, very well, and he got our point that we need to get our in health insurance uh, going. If going on for the, if the the three months they're due, we need to have an extension. Yeah, they need help here, Congresswoman Berkeley. We hear many times meetings, roundtable discussions. People need he help now. What yes. is the next step, and how soon can people like Jewel and Lucy see some help? Um, well, I'm hopeful that we're going to get something passed next week. The purpose of this roundtable discussion was to ensure and make sure that the lawmakers here on Capitol Hill don't lose sight of the fact that we are talking about workers. We're talking about families who have lost the breadwinner, people that are not able to make their rent payments, that pay for food, pay for medical, pay for um, uh, the electric bills, gas for their cars. And so when we're developing this economic stimulus package, which is very important to get business moving again and, and get our major industries in this country on the right footing, give them a helping hand, let's not forget the people that make these industries and these businesses work. And that's the working men and women in this country. And quite frankly, there were uh, no no two better advocates for working men and women in this nation explaining what they're going through than these two women. I was very, very proud of them, and I think all of Las Vegas would have been. I think, Sue, because of their efforts and the efforts of others that were uh, with us at the roundtable discussion, that we'll be able to to ensure that workers are protected while we're also providing economic stimulus for businesses uh, throughout the United States. And I think you're a great example, too, giving, what, three months of your salary to the culinary uh, union when you were here last time at home. So thank you for that, Congresswoman. And Thanks, ladies, we sir. appreciate all of your efforts. And we are proud, again, uh, for the representation on behalf of so many people who are in yep. situations like that. So we wish you best of luck and a lot of people waiting for word on this package. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Emergency workers in New York City, meantime, paused to mark a solemn date in U.S. history this morning. It was a month ago today that two hijacked jets brought down the Twin Towers in Lower Manhattan. Speaking at a memorial service at Ground Zero, New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani praised the men and women working on the recovery efforts. He thanked them for their dedication and commitment to the American ideal. The mayor said by their example, they are giving us the strength to emerge from this tragedy. Workers took off their helmets and joined arm in arm for a moment of silence at 8.48 this morning, the time of the first attack on September 11th. So far, there are 422 confirmed dead and 4,815 people listed as missing and presumed dead under the rubble of the Twin Towers. We remember them, we will always remember them, and to them we will dedicate the rebuilding of New York and making certain that we do not allow the terrorists in any way to affect our spirit. They attempted to break our spirit, instead they've emboldened it. And this was the scene at the Pentagon today. Thousands of people gathered to remember the victims of the attack on America one month ago. President Bush and the First Lady were there along with the military's top brass. They joined relatives of the victims and many others for this special memorial service. An army chaplain began the ceremony by saying, quote, our lives are changed forever, but our spirit will not be broken. The chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General, echoed uh, that thought, the general, saying that we should mourn our losses but celebrate the spirit of the victims. 
The attack on September 11th killed 189 people at the Pentagon, including 64 people on the hijacked plane. Florida health officials say a woman who tested positive for anthrax is not exhibiting flu-like symptoms. This is the third person that has tested positive for exposure to anthrax. As Robert Bazell reports, evidence shows that this strain might have originated in a lab in Ames, Iowa. Word came at a briefing last night from officials of the several federal, state, and local agencies involved in the investigation. We have an additional employee that has also been found to have anthrax present. She has been exposed, and our Air Force will now expand to focus on her day activities. In other developments, NBC News has learned that researchers at the Los Alamos National Laboratory have identified three possible strains of anthrax that could be involved. Officials had no comment on reports that the anthrax may have been stolen from a USDA lab in Ames, Iowa. I don't have any information on that. I don't have any, I don't have any information on that. Officials emphasize that there is no evidence of anthrax outside the American media building. Other employees of American Media Incorporated are being tested for anthrax. The tests for antibodies to anthrax are part of the effort to find out just how far the bacteria spread in the company offices. The employees are no longer in danger because they are taking antibiotics, but they still are very concerned. Are your children having a hard time dealing with the current events? Coming up next in today's Take the Time to Teach, we'll give you some tips on how to discuss the tragic current events with your children. This is your Three View Preview with Jim Snyder. Fighting fear with information. That is the best role we can play right now. And with that in mind, later today, we'll try to sort through some of the panic over the possibility of a biological attack in the U.S. If it happens, one antibiotic may be the first line of defense for civilians. Some people are trying to stock up on the antidote now, but doctors and pharmacists are issuing a strong warning about that. What you need to know today on News 3 at 4. everybody taking the time to teach when it comes to our students joining me today is Carla McComb she is the director of diversity and prevention services for the Clark County School District Carla welcome great to see you again thank you nice to be here thank you first of all tell us what is diversity and prevention services what do you guys do well that department has several programs that I know you are personally very familiar with in addition to multicultural education which we call project MCE we also have Indian education that offers tutoring to Native American students in the community and our Safe and Drug-Free Schools program. I know you're familiar with mm -hmm. that because of DARE and some of the other connections. So all of our programs deal with issues that bring immediate benefit to kids. Now, regarding the current events that's happening around this country and around the world and some of the tolerance, intolerance we have seen now, what are you talking to the kids about and how are you approaching these events? Well, first of all, we certainly want to focus on the positive aspects. We want to get beyond all of the traumatic experiences that all of our children have experienced. So we've spent a lot of time talking to them about the issues that come up, the words they've never heard before, Muslim, Islam, and some of those issues. You might be interested to know that our multicultural libraries had a huge run on all of our materials about the Middle East and Asia and about different religions because teachers want to be able to tell the teachers factual things. You know, knowledge is part of what helps spread that diversity feeling. And be able to answer questions that many of these kids are watching on TV and, and aren't able to explain to themselves about what's going on. And absolutely. How, what are you teaching them about tolerance? We have heard so many uh, attacks taking place throughout the country right now. Well, uh, obviously we don't want to see the kinds of things happen that we hear that might be possible. So what we tell children is that if they understand each other and they understand the power of unique views and differing viewpoints, then they can appreciate those differences. We don't really want to just tolerate others. We want to appreciate and celebrate others. So that's what we try to do. If you can tell a child about 
a different religion, for example, and the unique things that people of that religion understand and believe, then they may help them to understand why they take differing approaches. So you say education is the key? Well, we really believe that. If, if they understand those differences, then they can really appreciate them. So do you think it's ignorance that's uh, happening right now with some adults who are creating these problems? And, and certainly we know that children's uh, best role models are the one, the adults who are around them. So we encourage parents to be as positive as they can. And to be as educated as they and can themselves. And to find out. That's right. One of the first steps we took after the horrible events of the 11th was to send a packet of information materials out to students. We've also made that available to parents so that they can begin to open those doors. Very few people in our country knew much about Afghanistan and even its geography before mm -hmm. those events occurred. Mm -hmm. Now we're at least learning some of those things. Well, Carla McComb, thank you so much for joining us here today and continue the great work with the Clark County School District and our kids. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carla. We'll be right back. Hi. Let's uh, go ahead and put up those right now conditions. I walked out of the shy, I said, how close are we? And they said, right now, oh, 72 degrees, 13% humidity, winds calm, and barometer is falling 30.01. All right. It's uh, nice that we can continue to smile these days. 80 today, there's a lot to smile about. 80 today, 52 tonight, tomorrow, 77. Yes, even cooler still tomorrow. Keep in mind, by this afternoon late through tonight through tomorrow, expect some rather brisk breezes out of the north-northwest. Now, they're going to be more significant on that side of town and in the exposed areas, but I just want to give you a heads up. When you get up tomorrow morning, it is going to be at times breezy to locally windy on the north side of town. Yesterday, 77, 85 is the average. This morning's low, 52, 4 below the average. So now, after uh, so many days, a run of so many days of temperatures well above average, now we're seeing temperatures below. I'll show you why in a moment. The only problem with our air quality right now, folks, is we got some moderate readings of the, the PM10, the particulate uh, matter, 10 micron. Nothing in the unhealthful category. 72 here, 63 at Caliente. Cool up north, 46 in Elko, 63 San Francisco, 71 right now in the capital city of California. This is what's happening. A series of storm systems that are moving through. These are moisture starved. You can see, even see it with the satellite radar composite. There's just not a whole lot of moisture out there. A lot of cloud cover. So at times we're going to be mostly cloudy through uh, the next several hours. However, no moisture. But as you can see, the direction coming from the Gulf of Alaska pulling down cooler air as well. And so our temperature readings, I believe, are going to stay anywhere from 2 to 5 degrees below average all the way through the weekend. Forecast highs, look at that, 74, beautiful New York, 77 Raleigh, 75 in Atlanta. Uh, with some severe weather across the country's midsection, but out west, very nice, pleasant, 64 Denver, a little cool, Salt Lake, 57, 59 in Portland. Okay, your forecast. Up on the mountain, 65 today, 33 tonight. Yes, 33 tonight up the Mount Charleston Recreational Area. And some breezes are going to definitely pick up uh, late uh, this evening. It might get a little bumpy out on the water late today, but uh, Lake Mead, 84, beautiful, 60 tonight. And for the Las Vegas Valley, once again, 80 today, 55 tonight. Breeze is increasing uh, through the latter part of the day. Five-day forecast, 80 today, 77 tomorrow, 80 on Saturday, 78 on Sunday. Late Sunday, it looks like the winds are going to start uh, kicking up. But these temperatures, look at these upper 70s. Fall has definitely arrived. The uh, Frederick's Fact this hour. 60% of women say they receive 11 of these a day. Uh, some of the answers I can't even repeat for obvious oh, reasons. Gosh. Uh, but uh, some of the kisses was a nice one. I thought that was nice. Hugs, compliments, that would be nice. The uh, Scotty had the correct I guess. Emails, and uh, men say they. Uh, only 49% of men say they receive that many. So apparently uh, women are more mm -hmm. popular online as well. And uh, I said we had two winners, Tyler Shane, Penny Frenza, and respectively, uh, Tyler, is, is, she's a country music fan. She wants to go see uh, John Michael Montgomery tomorrow night at the Stratosphere. Hey. They got a brand new outdoor theater, good for her, with a buffet. And in the house, Kahunaville, 
Uh, Penny and I guess are going to go eat at Kahunaville over at the Treasure Island. I've been there. It's wonderful. And they're going to go see Tom and Vicki Smothers at uh, the uh, Those guys Orleans are hilarious. on uh, tomorrow night. They are a lot of fun. We've had them in here several times. <laughs> yeah, so congratulations funny. to both of our winners. Okay. Very nice. Very nice. You remember the movie Cocktail with bartenders doing everything with Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah. Well, this is Kahunaville. You know, take a little bit of that and mix it in with some wonderful food, and there you have it. Yeah, I'm just biting my tongue, actually. <laughs> Holding off, but uh, we're going to be talking with folks from Kahunaville after this. The Frederick's Facts Contest is held during weekday morning and new newscast. The winner is the first caller with the correct answer to the question and will be notified at that time. Prices and their value vary. Each winner must pick up their prize at KVBC within one week of notification. Any Nevada resident at least 18 years old can enter except employees of KVBC, their families and household members, and all affiliated companies. The winner may be required to sign a waiver and a promotional release. Complete contest rules, including prices and their value, can be obtained at kvbc.com or during regular business hours at KVBC 1500 Foremaster Lane, Las Vegas, Nevada. Coming up today on First News 3 at 4, the threat of anthrax has some Americans searching for a cure, but doctors are issuing a strong warning about the antidote. Tighter security measures around the U.S. Capitol are giving some truck drivers a big headache. We'll tell you why. And find out why books are comforting some Americans affected by the terrorist attacks today at 4. Take 10 of the world's top 15 bartenders and combine them with a restaurant headed by one of only 54 master chefs in the country and put it inside the Treasure Island. And what do you get? Kahunaville. Party all the time. Scott is with the chef right now for this week's featured restaurant. Oh, this is an incredible spread, right? Uh, right now is joining us uh, Executive Chef Joe Highland from Kahunaville. Talk a little bit about Kahunaville, obviously the big kahuna. This is a meal for anyone, for yeah. a, a, a feast, if that. What, where did you get the name Kahunaville when this first started? Uh, kahunaville started, uh, oh, about eight years ago, I mean, even a little bit before that. And um, it's headed by our uh, David Tuttleman, the mayor of Kahunaville. And uh, basically, he's all about people. You know, that's all he is. He's, he's just about people. And that's what Kahunaville is all about. We just happen to serve food and drinks at the same time. Now, let's talk about the cuisine a little bit. Yeah. What is the menu? I mean, this is the menu, just to give people an idea, it's a book. And then this is the drink menu. We talked a little bit about the drinks. This is the famous Kahunaville uh, menu right here. But talk a little bit about the cuisine and, and some of the ideas that you put together right here. And we'll go through these. Well, what we have, uh, it, you know, is a, it's eclectic. You know, if you want to call it that, but it's also New American, and it's uh, tropically infused. Uh, as you can see right here with our uh, coconut shrimp, it's, uh, you know, large shrimp prawns, and uh, they're wrapped with uh, phyllo dough with coconut. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we serve them with, a, you know, an island flair. We have our uh, spiked potatoes right here, which is a Caribbean Yukon mashed, you know, that we put applewood smoked bacon into, and then uh, fried potatoes along with that, and then uh, deep fried them with a creamy some bacon sauce. Some dishes, to say the least. Yeah. I mean, the presentation is unbelievable. Yeah, we've got uh, some um, uh, lobster fritters here with a mango mojo sauce and cilantro lime aioli, fruit salsa. We've got our Shanghai salad over here, which is uh, toasted wasabi uh, peas. It's a got side a, salad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Look at the size it's got, of this. It's got a, uh, you know, toasted macadamias. Uh, you know, it's very light. Uh, and then we have our uh, fried cheesecake. We're which lucky is, uh, to very, have very this popular. still on display because Sue has been <laughs> eyeing this for quite some time. A fried cheesecake. Yeah. So how do you make this? Uh, this is a, um, you know, a French uh, cream style cheesecake. And, um, and, you know, we bread it with a sugared panko. And uh, then we deep fry it, you know, and it's served hot. And then uh, we balance it out with this uh, tropical fruit salsa. You know, it's a, it's a big one. I imagine this is a popular dish. It is, very, very. And Sue's going to give this a whirl in, ju in just a minute. Explain to people what they can expect when they walk in. Again, Kahunaville at Treasure Island, open daily for lunch and dinner. Uh, what is the experience? You walk in and right initially is the bar area where yeah, you Yeah, when you walk in, it's just like, whoa, man. It's like an island <laughs> event, you know. I just, I just love it. It's a great place well, to work. Man. You just walk in, though, and you just feel, you know, something's happening. You know, and a lot more things are going to happen. It's... It's, it's, it's for all ages, but it's just, it just brings a lot of energy, you know. And then you go into our dining room, which has dancing waterfalls, you know. And, uh, man, I, I don't know. It's just it's really cool. I just, I'm just glad to work there. You know, it's, it's just fun. It brings it all out of everybody. And, of course, in an area and in a town where cuisine over the last five years especially has just gone through the roof and really yeah. established itself as a culinary mecca in yeah. the world, uh, Kahunaville has uh, a diversity 
on the menu that really is rare in this town because everyone likes to specialize but it seems like you have some things that no one else has. Yeah well we've made it a point to make sure that nobody else has this these flavor profiles you know, a lot of time has been spent on it but yet it's inexpensive you know it doesn't cost you you don't have to win the lottery to come here and eat <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I if mean, you do win it's still a nice <laughs> place to treat yourself. Yeah, you don't have to win I'm just saying it but uh, I think you're gonna find a lot of versatility we have about 80 items on the menu everything's cooked all a minute um, you know Everything's going to be really Now, there close. are Kahunavilles not only here in Las Vegas at the Treasure Island, but also in, two in New York, is that right? Yeah, there's two in New York, um, Buffalo and Syracuse, and Holyoke, Massachusetts, Ohio. Uh, we've got them in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan. We just opened up a brand new one in Tampa. And uh, we've got this one here that we just opened up a month ago, basically, a month and a half new. ago. And again, yeah. the hours again at, at Kahunaville? Uh, we open up at 11 for lunch, and uh, we go till uh, 2 o'clock in the morning with the bar just, or later. <laughs> or later. Or <laughs> later. It has been people. later many a times. Well, Joe, we appreciate you stopping by and bringing this wonderful food. All right, food. thank you, Scott. And Sue's going to come in for this fried cheesecake. But thanks for joining us, everyone. Go check out Kahunaville at Treasure Island. Yeah. Thanks for watching, everyone.